Hey all, Matt Hepworth here. And today we're gonna to look at how we can do a clean, unprocessed recording from Sphere, as well as simultaneously taking a fully processed sound with compression and everything like that. And a few things have changed since I did the first one of these videos a few years ago. If you're using an Apollo Firewire or using UAD version 9.9 .9 or earlier, the old video still applies and I've got it linked up here at the top. But for anything version 9.10, and later, which would be anything current, we need to do a few things differently than we used to. And so I've got my Sphere microphone here, and first thing I'm gonna do is go into settings, and I'm going to turn off my delay compensation, or IDC. And the reason I do that is because I want the lowest latency going in, especially because with 9.10 and later, Universal Audio has made some changes to do DSP pairing, but those changes actually affect latency on the auxes a little bit. And so the classic workflow is really no longer ideal. So we're gonna come back in console, gonna link our two channels here. I've got them in one and two. We're gonna come up here and turn on phantom power and a little light's gonna come on on the sphere to let us know that it's active. Then we're just gonna set the gain, check, check. Check, check, something about like that. Now let's put one of the Sphere microphone model plugins on there. And we can use the Oceanway or the Putnam. The Putnam collection actually has a U67 that I really like, so I'm gonna use that one. And so we can just click on these to get to that. Oops, went one too far, so I'll right click to go back. There we go. Check. Okay, got a good level. Everything looks good there. Now I'm just gonna put a little bit of compression on there. And I like the LA-2A and I like the 1176, and I actually use the legacy version of both those because I think they sound great and they add zero latency. So they get a lot of use here. Let's grab the LA-2A legacy. And actually, I like these in the opposite order, so I'm just gonna drag those and reorder them really quick. And what I'm going to be looking for, just going to arrange these. What I'm going to be looking for is as I'm doing my voiceover, I want to see just a little bit of peak reduction happening on the LA-2A. Just a little bit. Then with my makeup gain, bring that up just a hair to compensate for the gain reduction. And then on my 1176, I want to catch just the transients that slip through. I want to see the meter on that just barely moving. And we're going to print this with the compression and all. One thing that's very important is we want to make sure that this is not checked. We do not want this in record enable. We want this in monitor mode. And we're going to do a pre-fader send over here on the aux. We're going to leave the aux muted. That's simply capturing our process chain. I'm just going to shoot that aux up to zero. Check. There we go. I've got my aux meter over here. I've got my main over here. Looks like everything's good. Now, let's switch into Pro Tools and get this set up. Okay, so here we are in Pro Tools, and we're just going to add two tracks. First one is going to be stereo. This is going to be our dry, unaltered sphere so that we can process it later if we want to, which is one of the real strengths that sphere has and something that I use every day. And then we're also going to do a mono, since we're not doing any sort of stereo microphone techniques or anything like that. We're just doing a single source for voice. And we're gonna assign these. So we have mic one and two for our dry sphere. And sphere wet is going to be aux one left. And we're taking this aux one we're just using that left-hand side because we're dealing with a mono signal. You can see that both sides are exactly the same here. All right, so now that we've got that ready, we're going to mute the clean and pull the volume down all the way and then group these. And that way, when we record enable, you'll see that they both work in unison here, which we want. No pun intended. And by the way, unison preamps, totally fine to use with Sphere. All right, so now let's roll a test. Check, this is me speaking into the sphere and simply testing this beautiful U67 versus the raw sphere. Okay, and there we go. I have my waveform shrunk just a tiny bit. You can see 
we have a little bit of compression happening here, not quite as much dynamic range, not a lot of change here. I mean, pretty mild. And I do recommend, until you're really comfortable, being fairly mild with your compression settings. Same for EQ. So now let's take those out of record. Quick playback. Check, this is me speaking into the sphere and simply testing this beautiful U67 versus the raw sphere. There we go, super simple. And then the last thing we need to do is switch over to the console view in Pro Tools. And we need to do an offset because the aux is delayed 73 samples. So we need to compensate for that here in Pro Tools. Double click, we're just gonna do minus 73 and bam, it is compensated. Those are now gonna play back perfectly in phase. So anything we end up doing after the fact to our raw signal will still be perfectly phase aligned and coherent with the pre-processed one that we did. All right, so now let's switch over to Studio One and see how to do it there. Okay, so I haven't changed anything in console. We're gonna use exactly the same settings. Just that little bit of compression that's happening on there and the processing of that U67. So here we are in Studio One. We're gonna go track. We're gonna add a stereo track, add a mono track, just like we did in Pro Tools. Inputs, one and two. And of course, aux one L. I'm going to mute these so I don't have feedback. Okay, there we go. Those are both ready to go. And let's record. Check, check. This is me speaking into the Sphere microphone using Studio One and hearing the glorious U67 from Putnam Collection. Okay, there we go. You can see everything there. Our original track. It's still clean and raw. We can tell because there's a difference in the front and back recording. And then of course, our new process track here. Okay, but now we need to compensate for that extra delay. And we're using 48 kilohertz for this session, which means that 73 samples is equivalent of 1.52 milliseconds. So let's hit four for inspector. And wouldn't you know it, right there we have a delay box, minus 1.52. And there we go. These will now play back in proper alignment, just like they would in Pro Tools. So let's give that a quick check out. Check, check. This is me speaking into the Sphere microphone using Studio One and hearing the glorious U67 from Putnam Collection. And there we go. So hopefully that makes it easier for you guys to utilize Sphere so you have the benefit of being able to commit as you record and process that sound so you're closer to a finished sound from the get-go but you've still got that raw, clean, unprocessed signal to use for special treatment or anything like that. Or if you really get the microphone wrong or the compression wrong or something, you have a fallback. So that's the way I use the Sphere microphone system with the artists that I'm working with every day. Thanks so much for watching. Matt Hepworth, see you next time.